Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at consumption, food, and choices. Consumption is brought to you by Colossal Games. It's for one to four players, ages 10 and up, and games range anywhere from 60 to 120 minutes. In consumption, you will balance your food intake versus activity level. You will go shopping, looking for the certain types of food to create amazing recipes, and maintain a healthy activity level to stave off all kinds of diseases. And in the end, your victory points will reflect your overall health and wellness, along with your happiness at the end of the game. Now, setup is very straightforward in this game, but let's just go over some of the different areas that you'll be tapping into with those worker placement options. You have a grocery shopping list that you'll be getting new food items from. You have your daily planner, which is your activity level. This is where you'll get all of your sports activities and different things that help you burn those calories. And then of course you have takeout or fast food, Chinese buffet and pizza happens to be my favorite food. And you set up your recipe section on the board. And finally, you're gonna set up the farmer's market. There's different sets of cards here that are going to flip over based on what round you are currently playing. So those are the main areas of the board that you'll be setting up with various tokens and with different cards. Now, every player receives their player board and these player boards have two sides. You have your standard diet and you have different, more advanced diets on the other side. But in general, especially for your first games, you wanna start with the standard diet. Every player has these reference cards and tokens to start and then everybody places their scoring token on the zero position. And then finally, in the game, every player can tap into a set of assistants. So we're gonna set those six cards to the side and you're ready to start. So the game is divided into six rounds and in every round, you're going to be using an assistant as well as using all the different worker abilities of the board and of your player board. So you're gonna be doing all kinds of various things to have food intake into your body as well as prepare recipes that gives you special abilities. So let's take a look at how a round works. So the first thing you're gonna do is select an assistant. This assistant will help you throughout the game and they do all kinds of various things. Each assistant also has two different abilities and you have to decide which one of those you're gonna use on your turn. So let's take a look at these different types of actions. The first one we're gonna dig into is the fast food area, pizza to go. You put your worker there and you collect all the tokens and put them in your body area of your player card. You're intaking that food. So the nice thing here though, is that if you've chosen pizza at the end of the round, you get to put your token on another available spot and take that action immediately. Now, if you choose to go to the Chinese buffet, you get to pick one of the two rows that are available there. So again, putting those tokens into your body. All right, so let's go shopping. We're going to the grocery store. First thing you're gonna do is roll the craving dice and you put them in the row and column that they match and any food that matches that row or column is gonna be $1, cost you $1. And if you buy a food in there or anywhere in this grid, you're gonna place the shopping cart over it to show that it's been purchased. Now, if you buy a different type of food that's not in that row or column, it's gonna cost you $3. But if you decide that none of this is what you want and you wanna to go to the supply and buy a food outside the store, that's gonna cost you $5. So that's super pricey. Again, these are gonna be purchased and put into your kitchen. Next available action that you might take would be going to the farmer's market. And it's gonna be different every round. Based on the round, we'll flip different cards. So there'll be different items here that you can pick up. And the nice thing about the farmer's market is that the tokens that you pull from here or the foods that you pull from here are going to go either in the kitchen or your body, you get to decide. All right, let's take a closer look at recipes and cooking. And you can do both these things. Uh, and you can do it as many times as you want on your turn, really. So the thing you're gonna be looking for is recipes. So you can choose up to three that are on the board. And really, you can have as many unfinished recipes as you want. But you have to remember that in, at the end of the game, every incomplete recipe is worth negative points. So in order to, co to cook that recipe, you have to have food tokens. So you're going to be pulling tokens from your kitchen. You can put up to three on a card. And uh, again, you can have multiple 
different types of recipes underway at any one time. But once you complete a recipe, then all that food goes into your body and the card then goes to your completed recipe section, gaining you victory points that you'll grab those points around the board. Now, it's important to note that if you don't have at least 12 points of victory in your recipes at the end of the game, you're gonna lose 15 victory points. So it's very important to stay on top of those recipes. And it's important to note that once you've completed a recipe, now you have special abilities that you can tap into throughout the game. So it's important to keep track of what those are and use them frequently. Now let's take a look at activities. Activities work very similar to recipes and you're gonna be acquiring up to two of these. And again, you can have as many as you want, but again, they're gonna be worth negative points at the end of the game if you have incomplete activities. So you're looking at those and you're gonna to have to pull tokens now from your body in order to fulfill those activities. It's very thematic, I like it a lot. So uh, you wanna complete those and for every completed activity, you'll put next to your completed area and you'll gain victory points just like you did for recipes. Now, again, like recipes, if you have less than seven points of victory out of your activities, then you're gonna lose 10 points at the end of the game. So again, showing how it is important to balance the food and activity level in this game. Now there's also a snack action that you can take from your player board. And what you're gonna do here is grab one food item out of the kitchen and place it into your body. It's that simple. Now, after all the players have taken their actions and they've come to the end of the round, then you have to do a cleanup. And probably the main things to note here are, again, if someone grabbed pizza, they get one more option to move to an available spot and perform that action. So the other things, the other things that's important here, if you have any end of round special abilities, that's this is the time to activate those. And also, probably one of the biggest things to keep an eye on is the food in your kitchen can spoil. So at the end of the round, all the food moves down one spot closer to the trash can, and any food in that trash can at the end of the game is gonna give you negative two victory points. And so all players will collect their action tokens, and then you'll reset the board with all the food tokens and cards ready for the next round. And so at the end of the game, after the sixth final round, you're gonna calculate your score. You're gonna look at the food that's within your body and the tokens that are on the furthest green or yellow are gonna give you victory points. Now, there's again detriment for not having enough of a certain type of food or even having too much type of a food. So you gotta keep track again, a good balancing act. And then there's victory points for your recipes, victory points for your activities, and for each set of activity cards, it will give you even more additional victory points. And then whoever has the most, whoever's the most well-balanced, the most well-rounded individual will win the game. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that may occur. Now, with that said, this game actually hits close to home for me. I've spent the last year and a half on this kind of fitness weight loss journey. And so the thematic essence of this game and how it works really plays into the journey I've been on over the last year and a half and it appeals to me greatly. But ultimately folks, if this looks like a game that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me and until next time, We'll see you at the table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.